Thank you for joining the last VMware TAM customer webinar of 2020. Uh, this webinar is organized by the TAM organization with the intent of providing our TAM customers the opportunity to hear great content and interact directly with great speakers that are delivering it. So please make use of the Q&A feature to ask any questions. And if your question doesn't get addressed today, be sure and reach out to your TAM and ask them to follow up. Before we get into the content today, there are just a couple of basic announcements. Our next TAM customer webinar will be on January 21st, and we'll be joined by the VMware on VMware team to discuss their firsthand experiences of migrating from F5 to Avi load balancers. Should be a great session, and I hope that you can join us. As I mentioned earlier, we want you to benefit from these sessions by interacting with the speakers. So if you have any questions during today's webinar, please use the Q&A feature of Zoom, and we'll address them during the webinar. And lastly, this webinar is being recorded and your TAM can make the recording link available to you. Uh, after a few months, the recording will be publicly available on the VMware TAM Services YouTube channel. So be sure to check us out there. Uh, that brings us to today's speaker and topic. Sean Altman is a security specialist with VMware. And today he's going to be bringing us a really interesting presentation and demo uh, using Carbon Black, where he'll show us how to protect your organization against ransomware. Sean, thanks so much for joining us today. I'll uh, hand it over to you. No, thank you very much. I'm just looking forward. And again, um, as I said earlier, please do feel free to ask questions. I always think that makes it a little bit easier and a nicer presentation uh, as we're going through. So again, feel free to go through and ask those questions and answers as we're, and we'll answer those as we're moving along. Um, so today, what we're going to go through is just kind of talk about ransomware, how it's evolving, and how it's, of course, wrecking havocs in all of your organizations. Um, and then, of course, how modernizing security um, has gone through, and you can use that to go through and prevent uh, the next generation attacks. We understand that the workloads and everything has really changed um, with a lot of people working from home now. So again, we're going to go through and see that as we're going through. And then, of course, uh, do some demo and then uh, answer your questions. So um, Gartner, I'm sure as you guys have seen and heard, and heard from multiple different sources, so this is just one of the many sources out there, uh, but we've actually been seeing an increase of 148% um, of, of ransomware attacks going on. Um, and you're going to see there's actually multiple different reasons and things um, that's kind of caused that. Um, so one of them is, you know, it is a critical time. So things like hospitals, um, schools, all those kind of areas have actually been paying ransomware. Um, which, of course, is making it worse because now there's more incentive um, for the attackers to go through and do that. Um, so again, it, it's really not, I would say, anything new. It's just what we've seen is an increase. Um, and just like you're, you know, one of the things is how can we go through and prevent it? Um, one of the things you're actually going to see when we're going through and looking at um, some of those other slides is we've noticed that, you know, attackers are smart. They know that people are, are going through and, and patching the critical things, but not necessarily as quickly or it can take them a long time before they get to some lower critical things. Um, so you're going to see that's another common theme through here is just that defense in depth. Again, it's, it's nothing new. Um, it's something we've had and it's been around in the industry forever. Um, but again, it's just going through and reemphasizing of why is it important. Um, and again, it's because of the fact that we've had all these attacks. They're not new attacks. It's just been an increase of the number of attacks going on. Um, and again, just like we were talking about earlier, you know, COVID-19, it's just, it's shattering um, the records of the number of attacks we're having. Um, so in Pennsylvania, Ohio area, um, I've been seeing that a lot of the IR firms are kind of at their maximum amount. Um, so they're just in this huge need right now of, you know, any resource, anybody just to help with all of these incidents that's going on. Uh, because again, you know, the attackers, you know, they're working from home. So it's not like they're concerned about being out anywhere. Um, so again, they haven't really slowed down what's going on. So they are are continuing to, to have attacks. Um, and then what I thought it was important to go through and add to this today as we're going through um, is because a lot of people have heard about the FireEye uh, breach that had happened. Um, and again, I think it fits really well to this presentation. That's the reason why I went ahead and added it um, in here um, is again, it's, it's those basics that are going on. Um, and again, I mean, just like any organizations, we're all being attacked. You know, everyone's trying to get into us. You know, and it's just not security companies. Again, it's all of you guys also. Uh, they're just looking for any way in to go through and capitalize on that. Um, but when you start actually kind of pulling back the curtains on uh, on the fire eye, and again, there's a lot more to come out from that because again, it, it was just you know pretty much announced yesterday um, from that perspective. But what I always find interesting when you go through and start looking at these is there's a lot of CVEs in here 
um, that if we were just doing our normal patching, um, you would go through and see that a lot of these issues uh, kind of would already be resolved in your environment. So again, we understand that it's difficult. So that's hopefully what you're going to see, especially when we get over to the demo, is where we're going through and making it easier for you guys to go through and understand what vulnerabilities you have in your environment. Um, so we can go through and help you address those quickly. And then of course, address the, the critical vulnerabilities. So like all these would now be you know flagged as, hey, critical, because we know there's no malware out there that people can go through and use to go through and, and use these CVEs. And again, on top of this, right? So we've got an increase, the attackers are continuing to, to attack. They're increasing the number of attacks. They're being more creative in their attacks. Um, so ju again, just our normal ways is not working. Um, again, before a lot of our attacks, uh, the way you go through and prevent that is you would go through and put this hard shell around your data center. Um, and then, of course, everyone would be safe, you know, because they're inside of this center. Um, but, you know, everyone's working from home now. So, again, that shell has expanded and, and those controls that you were using just inside of your data center are not necessarily enough anymore. Um, so from your end, you know, end user computers, are you guys using, you know, next gen antivirus? Um, are you aware of what's going on? Um, how does the recording work if you need to go back and find something? So those are some of the things that you're going to see as we're going through uh, the rest of this demo. So again, this is just to go through and just show a few of the examples. And again, this is just because a lot of these have been in the news, especially with kids working from home. Um, so, and you know, since they can't go to school anymore. So that's the reason why you'll see that a lot of this, especially in the US has been, uh, you know, catching a lot of attention. Um, and again, the, the bad side of it is the fact that, you know, a lot of these ransomwares are being paid. So again, it's just increasing the amount of tax uh, because they know that there's money to be had. So again, these are you know really not necessarily new attacks, right? They're going all the way back to 2017, and again, it's just you know new versions of them, new names, those those kind of perspe perspectives. But again, it's it's the real basic, right? They find some small little way to get in, and they go through and expand. Um, and then sometimes the problem is it can take a long time before anyone's really aware of what's going on in the environment. Um, so that's the reason why you're going to see that it it really does take a full uh, you know security. Uh, you know, in-depth approach to go through and do this. So again, just going through, and again, don't want to beat it to death because you guys are well aware and the news is going through and talking about all these different ransomwares. Um, but the problem is it can be very devastating to a company. Um, so I've been working with a lot of customers lately and had several of them where we had some early conversations, you know, six months ago. And they're like, yeah, we know that our tools aren't quite really what we want. Um, but they're like, we don't really have the money or the time to really invest in this. And well, now they're kind of circling back because now they've been notified, they've, they found out they have a breach. Um, and again, it's just taking a lot of time now um, and they didn't have time to begin with, but now they have to find the time to go through and clean up their environment and get you know, some, some additional controls and security pieces inside of their environment. So the question is, is how can we go through and change this? Um, especially when you go through and start looking at analysis, especially stuff like FireEye, right? It's not that they don't have security resources. It's not that they don't have a bunch of smart people. Um, so the question is, is, what can we do and how can we make it easier so that we can use the tools we have or further use the tools we have to go through and really start wrapping around security everywhere we are in our environment? So you guys are aware, you know, there's a ton of different tools that everyone's using especially when you start talking infrastructure, start talking security groups, everyone's kind of using their own version, their own flavor. They send a little bit of data back and forth. Um, but again, they're really kind of siloed from that perspective. And everyone just kind of works with the tools that they're comfortable with. Um, there's really not a lot of context going on. So when you go through and start dissecting all these different breaches, a lot of the times they'll go through and they'll see that there were some alerts, there were some indicators, there's some signs of stuff going on. Um, but the problem is, is they just couldn't see it through all the noise of everything that's going on. So that's the question is, is, can we go through and make this easy? Have multiple groups go through and, and use this. Um, and then on top of it, can we add some additional context so you can clearly focus and know what things you need to go through and focus on? Um, and then of course, you know, it, it's hard. We all have our own jobs to do, right? So, uh, and we have a business to run and that of course that's the critical thing. And then IT is just enabling that business to run. Um, but the question is, is 
why do I have to go through and have all these different tools? And every time there's a new version release, I have to make sure and make sure everything's still compatible. I have to go through and do testing. And it's just becoming a nightmare to go through and manage those things. So that's where we're saying is, can we take a different approach? Um, and that's why you see, you know, VMware had bought Carbon Black is to go through and say, you know what, we, we truly need to build security in and have a wrapper around everything we're doing. So why does this become important? Um, so what we're looking at here is some Gartner research. And what it's saying is um, up here on the top of it, you guys can see this blue area here. This is where a lot of people have been spending a lot of their money and their resources. But what we've actually seen is you get a lot better big uh, you know, money value if you go through and are, you are also focusing on these deeper green sections. So this is where, you know, again, it's that defense in depth. Can we go through and put memory protections in? Can we go through and do some application control? Um, can we go through and have firewall um, layers on top of it? Um, can we go through and do hardening? So can we actually say, hey, you know what? These are known processes. These are good processes. We can start, actually what we wanna do is look at the behavior of those processes. We don't wanna overwhelm you with, hey, we just see a new process in your environment. But if we see a process acting differently and we can see signs that, hey, it's trying to reach into memory locations it shouldn't have access to. Hey, it's trying to go through and touch files it shouldn't even be you know, touching. Uh, we see that it's trying to add encryption. Those are the kind of indicators that it doesn't matter if it's a new attack, old attack, you know, some future attack. Those are the kind of indications that we can go through and look at and we can see common things and be able to stop those when we see them going on, even though we don't necessarily know the name of what that threat is if it's a new threat. So again, it's really saying is, hey, can we kind of flip things upside down? Let's, let's do that defensive depth. Let's really start doing the hard thing. We know it's difficult. We know that the DevOps teams are out there because they need to go through and get that new feature turned on. So we know they're running at full speed. We know that they're using different tools and different technologies. So we know we need to modify our security platform to go through and handle that. Um, but what we're saying is, is, can we get to the basic of that? Can we start at the very basic foundation and build it up so that way we're, we're fully protecting the environment and then do it in a way that's easy for you guys to be able to handle. So again, this is just to go through and start understanding how that works. So what we're saying is, is our tools will go through and help you in the prevent stage. So go through, let's harden it. Um, let's make sure we understand what CDs are in there. Let's get those systems patched. Um, and then, hey, let's be able to detect and respond. Um, and then, of course, on top of that, to complete that circle is, hey, we need to constantly be identifying and looking for risk. Not only risk that we know of today, but hey, you know what? I've seen this threat now. So, you know, we've seen all these indicators of if someone's using the FireEye tools. Do I see those indications in my environment? Well, let's go back and see, you know, wouldn't it be able to go back in time to be able to look kind of like a video recorder when you see someone breaking into a house? Let's see what all those, those things and events were that came up to them actually getting inside of the house. That's what we're really doing with our tools. And you're going to see that we're actually built into the, the vSphere environment. I mean, again, we don't, we're not stopping there. Um, Workspace One, all those different pieces we have integrations for. Uh, so do know that we are here to fully secure that full environment for you. So again, what we're doing is we're trying to break down those silos. We're going to go through and focus on those threats and actually bubble those things up. And again, remember, we are going to be built in. Um, so these things that we're going to be looking at today, they are inside of vSphere. So it sits inside of VMware tools. Um, so if you guys have a, you know, a newer version of VMware tools, we can go through and actually just enable this functionality. So the bits and pieces are there. And it's just an exercise of saying, you know what? Yes, these are the policies we want to have. So maybe we just want to see vulnerability information. Maybe we want to have a next gen antivirus or maybe we want to have an EDR. And again, it's just an exercise of going through and enabling those things that's in your environment. So think of it more of a, hey, you know what? You purchased the license, we can turn it on. Um, and then you just enable it for either parts of your environment or all your environment. So this is where we're going to start spinning and talking more about um, specific um, pieces in your environment. Um, so what we actually have from the Carbon Black VMware side is think of it as we kind of have two different main investments. Because we understand um, endpoints are very important, right? And that's our bread and butter, especially on the Carbon Black side. That's where we've really started up and that's where we've been running for years and have lots of different protections around those. Um, but we also know that it's very important to go through and protect the data center. And we know that that data center is changing. We know that it's not just necessarily one data center anymore. It can be a multiple of different clouds. Um, so again, that's where we're saying is we're flexible. We're built into all those different pieces. Um, again, today we're probably not going to get into Kubernetes. Um, but if you guys have questions, do know that we are um, 
offering different solutions for protecting Kubernetes. So think of it as for that, not only you know doing that traditional antivirus EDR, so I know we're recording things that are going on, but we're actually protecting the full life cycle. So we go through and understand that there's a lot of security functions and features that you have to turn on. Who has access to what? What are those settings? How are they configured? So that's where we actually start with our product. We're just not looking at the antivirus piece of it. And then we know it doesn't stop there with just with the settings. We also know that a lot of it is, is tied into how is, you know, how is it developed? How, how is the DevOps team going through and building it? So that's the reason why we're actually built inside of that also. So think of this multiple different wedges so that we can go through and fully protect your environment. And then of course, at the end of the things that we've been doing, especially from the carbon black side, nothing new, is going through and understanding what malware looks like, going through and looking at behaviors of things to tell you if it's good or not. And then of course, blocking those things or even just recording that data so that you have access to it. So again, we're going to go through and I'm going to try to show off both of these different pieces today. So both the workload protection, so that's where we're native built into vSphere, and of course, expanding that into all the different clouds, and also, of course, um, Kubernetes, that's all part of that workload protection piece. Endpoint protection, again, that can be, you know, antivirus on a server if you guys want, but again, uh, it's also where it goes all the way back to end user computers. So wherever you have that machine, if it's sitting in a coffee shop outside of your network, we can equally protect that just as well where it's sitting there as if it's sitting, you know, inside of a corporate office. So, so we can go through and understand how to use these tools where I think it's basic, you know, important. So let's just start back with kind of ransomware 101. Um, so how is ransomware, you know, exploiting? And again, there's lots of different exploits for this, but we're just going to talk about ransomware here, focus for a little bit. So again, the attackers are looking for some sort of way in. It can be they send an email. It could be you guys have a web server out there that has some vulnerabilities, and you'll actually see that when we go to the demo is, you know what, they're just exploiting things that are natively running today. And again, they're smart enough to know that, hey, let's try to make it look like things and use processes you guys are already using so that it's very hard to go through and determine that and see that there is something malicious going on in your environment. So once they get past your email, uh, again, it could be a, you know, bait, you know, just a bait email. So, hey, they click on it and then maybe they get credentials. So again, there's different flavors in there, but just do and know it is starting somewhere. So somewhere someone's either clicking on it or they're going through and they're using a vulnerability that's already open in your environment. So once they get in, then they're gonna go through and they're gonna start that, what we call that land and expand. Um, so again, they're gonna go through and say, you know what, can I get a little bit of access in here? Do I now have, you know, maybe some access to PowerShell? Do I actually have a spot where I can actually get these users credentials and actually look like a user now when I'm going through and going to expand? And again, that's what they're doing is they get in, find a little way in and they just kind of start expanding that. And of course they're smart enough to know to use just normal tools we have in there. So use PowerShell, um, go through and use jo um, JavaScript, um, go through and use any of those sort of tools that are already there, use exploits for vulnerabilities that have been known, like what we were looking at for FireEye, you know, three, four year old vulnerabilities that are out there and just haven't been patched yet. So once we land, once we get in there, then that's where we can go through and, and maybe get to Active Directory, um, go through and wedge in ask Active Directory because it has, you know, access uh, to go through and maybe start installing some of my malware um, and then reaching out to do, you know, command and control and getting some updates of, hey, what do I want to do? Send me those keys that I'm using to go through and encrypt this data so that way, you know, you pay a ransomware and I get it back to you. So again, it's not really anything new. It's stuff that's been going on for years. It's just we've been seeing an increase of it with the combination of that and the fact that the world has changed. There's a lot of people working from home now, so they're not inside of the protections of that data center. So the question is, is how do we do that? How do we go through and start protecting and making it different for you guys? Um, so what you're gonna see here is these are just some of the basic features of the Carbon Black Cloud. Um, so again, this is running in the cloud. So uh, we have it up and running. That way you guys don't have uh, you know, a console, a server that you have to go through and manage and update all the time. Really what it is, is it's gonna be a combination of just us enabling it for you. Hey, we had a uh, question in uh, the Q&A. Uh, yes, so I, just saw kinda... that, uh, I just saw that pop up. So let me stop and answer that here as we're going through. Um, so what are the specific tools available in the later versions of vSphere? Um, so what we're really going to be talking about today is I'm only going to focus around the carbon black pieces of it. Um, so inside of vSphere, um, if you guys are vSphere um, 6.7 and above, so again, a lot of organizations are there, um, they can go through and use that. 
Um, and then what it is, is we then sit inside of the hypervisor. And again, that's a different versioning. So just 6.5 for the hypervisor and above is what we're going to fully support for the features we're looking at today. Um, and then in VMware tools, there was a newer release of tools 11.2. So that's where our bits and pieces are actually sitting to go through and turn this on. Um, so then a question is, is there um, additional charge for this? Um, yes, a lot of these features we're looking at today um, are going to be additional charge. So we have different licensing structures to go through and do that. Um, inside of vSphere for the workload protections, when we're talking about that, um, you can actually go through and uh, license it per, um, per socket like you guys are doing today. Um, if, if you guys don't want to use that licensing model, then we do also allow a per device. Um, and then I saw some questions about in here, do we integrate with Workspace ONE? Um, and again, the reason why I'm tying that together is, is that's just another licensing way. Um, so just like, you know, for you guys that were familiar, the old app defense products that we had for vSphere, so just it was vSphere Platinum. Uh, we have very similar things for uh, Workspace ONE, it's just Workspace ONE security. Um, so inside of that, what you can do is either per user or per device, we do offer both licensing off of, you know, um, actions for this. Um, for Workspace ONE, um, where we are today, we're um, actually built together inside of the executable, um, as in, I think it's already released. If not, it's within the next week or so. Um, and again, if we don't, aren't using that single installer, then what we have is just a small agent today um, that we go through and roll out. And something else, talking about Workspace ONE um, and going th through and talking about VDI, uh, because of the fact that we are, when we start, start talking about the next gen antivirus, we do run completely different than a traditional antivirus. So what that means is you can actually get a lot of processing and memory usage back. And so we've been able to see, um, especially if you're using Horizon for us, expanding that a little bit further. If you're using Horizon, we've been able to go through and see about an 80% reduction. Um, and then just in general VDI, um, so it can be you know, non-VMware products from that perspective, we've been seeing in between 50 and 60% um, percent reduction. Uh, and it doesn't stop there, that boot time. So I had a customer a couple weeks ago uh, working with them for a POC, a proof of concept. Um, they had, um, in their case, it was Citrix VDI. Um, for their Citrix VDI, um, their normal boot time using their antivirus they were using uh, you know, before they turned on ours, um, it was taking anywhere between three to four and a half minutes for those VDI, non-persistent VDIs to start up. After we went through and got, it, got the policy turned on that they were looking for, uh, we got that down to anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and a half if the person had a really large profile. But again, that was a huge difference from, you know, three to four and a half minutes down to, you know, you know, to a minute, to, you know, half a minute for the majority of those users. And then I see a question in here also about uh, carbon black application control. Um, so for that, yes, a lot of people also know that as, as the bit nine. Um, so for that today, we do not have a cloud-based solution yet. There's been some discussions of us going through and bringing some of those features over. But again, that's still a, a roadmap discussion. Um, and again, that's something we can, we can talk further offline. Um, but since we do have a mixed group in here today, I, I can't go quite as far onto those roadmap details. But again, uh, feel free to reach out to your TAMs and we can always have further conversations. So as we've been going through quite a few questions here, I thought I'd pause for a second, um, see if there's any more that might pop in. But I do appreciate those questions and keep them going. And I've got the, the Q&A question here screen on my second screen, so that way I can see those when they pop in now. All right. So inside of here, and of course, this is probably where some of those questions were coming from. Um, we do have on-prem solutions, and we're going to continue to have those. So don't think that we're getting rid of those. Um, but we also do know that, um, especially with everything changing, and a lot of people might not ever return to an office, we know it is important to have a lot of, um, you know, cloud presence out there, which is something we've had for years. And what we're doing is just continuing to expand that and move those pieces in there. Um, so basic parts of our cloud piece, um, again, it is cross-platform. So Windows, Mac, Linux, Azure, um, you know, um, sitting inside of all the different clouds that are out there, sitting inside of Kubernetes. Um, we can provide all these same functionalities. 
So next gen antivirus. So what does that mean? Um, it means that we're just not looking at hash files um, and hash values. Um, and it doesn't mean that we're just going through and kind of creating a hash of here's what we think behavior looks like. Truly what we're doing is, is we're using our AI to go through and watch what's going on with these processes. And then we go through and we build in thresholds and saying, you know what, based on the policy that you guys can go through and configure, you'll, we'll go through and say, you know what, when we start seeing it act like this. So you know what, it's a normal good thing. So we'll say PowerShell. PowerShell in itself, it's good, it's important. There's lots of reasons that we have it running on our environment. But now I'm starting to see it act a little weird. It's starting to reach into memory it shouldn't have access to. It's starting to try to install other applications. So those are the kind of behaviors that we're gonna be doing with the, the next gen antivirus. Part of what we're doing with that, for those of you that don't use the Carbon Black products today, um, be aware that for our cloud piece, what we're actually doing is recording data and pumping it up to the cloud so that we can actually go back in history, um, which is where it becomes very important in our EDR function. What that will allow us to do is kind of like these FireEye things. I can actually go back and say, you know what, do I see these indications in my environment? Um, even though I wasn't really aware of it until today. Um, but again, because we're constantly recording and it's unfiltered data that we're moving up to the cloud, that just allows us to go through and see all of that data. A lot of other tools out there, what they're doing is, is they're going through and they'll start recording or go back and try to grab all information they can after it hits a trigger. But we understand that it's important to record all that data. So that way, as vulnerabilities and, and new risk and everything comes out, we can actually go back and see, you know, hey, is there something different? But then again, we're just not stopping there. Again, we are really using true AI to go through and block processes in real time. Um, EDR, think of that as it's going to be a combination of the, the motion to ten, you know, sensors that you have you know, built into your, your windows and doors, um, and also you know, video cameras so you can actually see who's coming up, you know, some floodlight alerts, those kind of things, right? Is, hey, you know, turn on a bright light when someone's coming, saying, hey, this is starting to look a little, a little dangerous just to see if it scares them off. So again, those are all kinds of some of those features. A managed detection. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware that we do have a managed detection solution, and actually the price of it is, is very good. Um, so a lot of people are kind of really amazed when they see what that does. So think about this. We know you guys are all busy. You all have your own day jobs that you need to be doing. Um, but we know that it's also important that someone is watching your console and going through and, and reaching out to you guys saying, hey, you know what? We really see some, some indications that someone's trying to hack into. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I actually had um, our, our, we had a managed detection for one of my customers and they actually saw an attack where someone was actually trying to get to their AD controllers. Um, so they went through and of course uh, found those couple of machines that, uh, you know, they had some malware on them. Um, and of course the malware was stopped. Um, but, um, but again, they could still see that there was some indication. So they wanted to go through and totally clean those machines up and get them further away from the environment. Uh, because again, they did see that someone was trying to attack it. Um, and then of course the other case I had um, was they were trying to go through a web server. Um, again, there was some, some CVEs out there. They should have probably had patch. Um, but again, that's where they could reach out and say, hey, you know what? We do see them trying to come through this web server. You, you, you need to clean that up. Um, audit remediation. It's truly what it sounds. It's like what we've been talking about the whole time is to go through and really block all these threats that are going on. It's a combination of not only having cool next-gen antivirus things, um, but it's also important to have that defense in depth so that you go through and really protect your machines. Um, and then on top of that is we actually need to know what versions of things are out there. With people working remotely, uh, you know, it'd be nice to go through and just be able to click a button and say, you know what, tell me all the Chrome instructions and, and you know, extensions that I've had, you know, uh, employees go through and put on their machines. Again, for us, that's just as simple as click of a button. It doesn't matter if they're on-prem anywhere in the world, as long as there's an active interconnection, we can go through and, and query those results and you can see that from our console. Um, so this is where I want to start showing you a little bit of visibility. Again, I want to do this so I can blow it up a little bit because it might be a little hard when we flip over and start looking at my console. Um, so think of it as we're here, we're doing all the smart things for you. So think of it as we give you all those easy buttons. Um, and then, but then on top of it, we do understand that sometimes you guys want to get technical, really get into the weeds and understand what's going on. So what we're really looking at here is TTP. So think of it as we give you guys different flags. So you don't need to be, you know, a hardcore threat person to go through and understand what these threats are. We're giving you kind of the easy buttons to go through and flag it and say, you know what, within a few seconds, you can look at this and see that what's going on here. Um, it looks like it's an attempted client and we can see that there's actually some suspicious behavior tied to it. 
Um, some other ones we'll look at in the console. If you guys are familiar, the MITRE ATT&CK framework, um, we'll actually go through and, and uh, attach to it all these different flags telling you where, you know, what it's associated with with those MITRE ATT&CK threat, you know, feeds, IDs. Um, so again, what it is, is we're trying to give you that easy way to go through and start seeing it. And what's nice about this is you can truly go, you know, forwards and backwards in time because we do record that data just basic out of the box. Uh, 30 days is what's included with our basic licenses. Um, so this is where we're going to start tying it back into the, the vSphere, which is where I'm going to jump over to the, the demo section here. Um, so again, what you'll see is it's an easy button. So essentially, if you have the right version of VMware tools in there, um, and of course, meet those requirements from the, the vSphere side, um, and of course, the hypervisor side, then it's literally just an action of being licensed. And then you'll have this button here where you can go through and say, yes, I want to protect this particular machine. Uh, so again, it's, it's native, it's built in, and you're going to see that when we jump over and look at the console. So I haven't seen any other questions pop out back up yet, um, but again, I will give you guys a few seconds here to, to ask some questions. All right. So now what I'm gonna actually do is just jump over and uh, get to the console. Um, so inside of the console here, um, what I'm right now is I'm just looking at my vCenter. Um, and I'm actually going to go through. This is probably going to make me log back in since I've been talking so long. There we go. So what I'm looking at here is, is the dashboard. Um, so this dashboard, again, our whole purpose is, is to quickly give you this information. So this is what we're looking at is the workload functionality. So quickly, I can go through and understand what vulnerabilities I have in my environment. I can see what machines um, are affected assets. I can see the inventory status for those machines that I have enabled um, and go through and truly understand what's going on. And then, of course, I'll go look at the, the you know, inventory in depth here in a second. But again, it was as simple as I have one OBA. That is how we can go through and start talking to vSphere. And as soon as that, we can almost instantly go through and get a full inventory of what's going on in your environment. And then um, what's going on with our vulnerability, something I want to talk about uh, in here is it's essentially scanless from that perspective. So because we're already watching processes, we already know, have an inventory of what's going on, um, especially if you're using our, you know, any of our other features like the next gen antivirus or the EDR. So we're already in there. So it's not like you have to go through and have this really intensive um, scan going on on the weekends, like what you typically have with a lot of the other vulnerability scanners that are out there. So really what we're doing is we're saying, you know what, we're built in. We're just going to go through and use this information we already have. If there's anything additional in the CD that's specific that we don't already know, then we'll go through and just ask that information as part of our normal check-in process is, hey, Mr. Agent, I need to know this registry setting, and then it will come through and report that back in. Um, so again, what you'll see is it's really, you're not seeing a lot of intensive behavior at all because again, it's just part of what we're already constantly doing as we're in, in your environment. Um, what, I've, what I've seen, especially doing a lot of POCs, is a lot of people have been amazed with the number of vulnerabilities that they have in their environment where they thought they had everything patched. Um, so inside of here, you'll be able to see we are across Windows and Linux. Um, and of course, you can go through and look at the asset view like we're looking at here, or you can go through and look at the vulnerability view. Um, so what the vulnerability view is doing is it's actually allowing you to actually understand what's going on with these vulnerabilities. Um, so in here, you'll actually see we actually changed these risk scores. So in here, you can see that kind of originally it was like an 8.6. But you can see we actually went through and we changed this up saying that, hey, this is a very high severe um, case. It's a 10. And the reason why we find it a 10 is there's active internet breaches going on. We can see there's known malware um, exploits out there that people are easy to use. And of course, that on top of it, it's an easy to use um, exploit on top of that. So those are the kind of features we're, we're looking at, along with the threat vectors. You know, is it a network vector that we're really seeing it go through? Those are the kinds of things we're doing so that we're rescoring this for you. Because I know um, as a practitioner, uh, whenever I would go through and get the, the different reports that are out there, and I would see that run when I come in on Monday, 
you know, it'd be almost overwhelming of, oh my goodness, there's so much of this. Um, and then when I come over to the infrastructure team, they're like, dude, there's no context to this. Yeah, you're right. I see some bits and pieces on here. There's a DLL on here, but it's not even configured. It's not even running. So that's part of what we're trying to do is filter out all that noise so that we're really showing you vulnerabilities that are actually real in your environment and just not a potential of something that could be there because maybe someone had an install directory sitting on the machine um, but didn't ever really install the bits. So those are the kinds of things we're trying to do. And then again, like we talked about earlier, because we know um, that threats out there, they're really smart. Um, so we know they're starting to use some of those lower CVEs. So we will go through and rescore those so that you guys can know which ones you really need to focus on. And again, we are across, and again, I'm not gonna look at apps from here. I'm gonna go look at it from a different view, um, but you will also see your Windows, your Linux apps, all those kinds of different things. Um, so in here today, you're gonna see this is all focused around workload is really just focused around the data center today. So it is gonna be all the server level OSs. Um, here in a couple months, we're gonna be expanding that to include just all general OSs. Um, but what we're really focusing on right now, because we know it was a priority is, um, is the data center because we know that's where the highest risk is. That's where a lot of your, your crown jewels are. So we know that you need to protect those data center because you don't want people to have access to that data. Yeah, so um, question is, does this go through and install an agent on the VM? Um, so what's going on with that is it is inside of VMware tools. Um, so inside of VMware tools that are, are um, some people will call them agents, some people won't write from that perspective. So again, all the bits and pieces that you need are inside of that VMware tools in this case. Um, if it's a machine that's not inside of your VMware environment, that's where we do have a light thin agent to use um, that you guys can go through and install on all those other different systems and be able to manage all that from, from one console. Um, so inside of inventory, what's nice about this, especially when we're talking about the VMware environment, is we can quickly go through and see where is it already enabled. So if it's not enabled, if you don't have, if you don't have a check saying, yes, I want to have this run, um, then you can just come over to the not enabled spot. Um, and again, this is where we try to make it easy for you guys to understand. So in here, you can go through and just hover over and say, you know what, why, why can't I enable this one? And it's saying, hey, you know what, you either need to have, you know, a version of VMware tools, or you need to go through and use a launcher, like what we were talking, is use an agent to go through and get it installed. I um, mean, again, those are, are the two different ways that we have inside the VMware environment. Um, a question is here, can I protect Tanzu workload with, black, with Carbon Black um, also? Um, yes, and, and that's the reason why I, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to get into all of that today. Um, so again, I think that's probably be a better for a follow-up conversation, but the short answer is yes. Um, so inside of there, those Kubernetes things, um, that's where um, inside of workload, again, what we're focusing on today is all, all of the OS features. Um, but inside of that, um, we do have uh, ways that we're going to go through and, you know, and protect all the different Kubernetes pieces. And then be aware that we have a very intensive roadmap. Um, again, I don't want to get into all those details. Um, just because we do have a mixed group in here today. Um, but do be aware we do have an extensive roadmap for next year to go through and, and way beyond what we're doing today inside of Kubernetes, um, inside of Workspace ONE, inside of Horizon. Again, our goal is, is to go through and have everything intrinsically built in. So it's just a licensing exercise and then go through and you know check the box saying, yeah, I want to have it enabled. So when we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and, and veer back because I need to know that we have a, a huge group of people that live just inside of vSphere. So think of it as we know that you guys want to have data, but you want to have it natively in your experiences of the tools you're using today. That's the reason we have that plugin. Um, the security folks, they're going to live over here in this, uh, in this SAS console, which we'll go through and look at also just so you can see both views. Uh, but we do know that you guys are going to want to live in here. Um, so what you'll see um, under the summary page, this is um, once it loads here, you can see this is that, that plugin that gets turned on. Um, so with that plugin, this machine's already enabled. Um, if it wasn't, you would just see a button here to go through and say enable. Um, and of course, what update is, is we do understand that you guys might want to go through and control, especially if you're using um, the antivirus features, you want to go through and kind of control those, those um, functions on what version it is. So that's where inside of here, we do allow you to go through and manipulate and change those versions from inside of here. So inside a monitor, this is just like we were looking at before, but we're just focused on one VM from that perspective. 
Um, so again, you'll see that you can go through and expand this and see everything just as, as you were before. Um, but then you can also go through and, and also see that application level from here. And again, you can see the application level from the other side. I just always prefer to, to show it down here um, so that you can actually see that value of actually understanding what apps are out there. So we know DevOps teams out there are probably changing a lot of things. You know, they're constantly manipulating, updating because they have to to meet their, their business, you know, those business ELAs that they personally have for their products um, that they're managing and supporting. So we know that it can be hard to know what's out there. Um, so again, that's where in here, quick view, just because we're already kind of scanning through seeing that data just natively how we're running, you'll see it right there. Um, but if you do want to go through and recess it, so maybe uh, reassess. So, hey, you know what? I've installed a patch now. I want to know. Instead of having to wait for that traditional way, you would, you know, you would have had to wait for that weekend scan or quarterly scan, however you guys are doing your scans. Um, you can actually just click reassess right now. All right. So I see some questions out here about uh, APIs or using PowerShell or the Power CLI. Um, yes. Um, so again, we do have an extensive API, you know, just as part of, you know, pretty much any VMware product. And of course, Carbon Black always had those APIs. And so we just keep continue to expand those. We have a great user community out there. Um, so guys do feel free to reach out to there. Um, because again, what we do is we have our own smart people go through and write things. And then of course, just like you guys, you, you all have custom things that you need. So they'll go through and write things and put them out also. Um, and people have been really impressed with our APIs, especially once we start jumping into the vulnerability piece uh, uh, and seeing how much further you can go with it. So for right now, just talking about the vulnerability pieces, yes, we've got APIs, so you can pull and get all of this data at, back in our RESTful API um, and then go through and it'll be a JSON file that you can go through and manipulate however you guys want to, you know, to change that process. Um, but then when we get in here to the next page, which we'll jump in here soon, um, you're going to see a, a lot more when you especially start thinking about APIs of how to use APIs or how you might want to use those APIs. Yep, so questions, can we go through and turn these features on um, in a home lab? Um, uh, for that, there's some pieces that you can have some trials, um, but for the full thing that we're looking about here today, especially when we do the full uh, next gen EDR, those kind of things, um, we'll allow for some POCs and those kind of things. Um, but again, uh, we don't necessarily today, I know they're working on some, some functionality to do that. Um, but today, what we tell a lot of people to do is we've got test drives out there. So if you guys go through and use the hands-on labs or use test drive, that's where we've got all of it in there today. So you can start playing with it. Um, but again, um, especially if you're looking for inside of your work environment, um, one of the things you'd have to sign up for here soon, uh, but we can get that to all of you guys, um, is there is actually a free trial going on for the workload pieces that we've been looking at. So the vulnerability piece. Um, and what we allow you to do is it's a free full, you know, full for that. So you can use it in your whole environment if you guys want. If you only want to do it in a test environment, all you have to do is just sign up for that. Um, we do have a registration date um, that was originally was supposed to be December 1st, but I believe we moved that back to December 21st. Um, so again, we can send that out to everyone so you can see how to sign up for that free trial. That trial will go till um, the end of April. So if you do choose to turn that on, you can use all of those licenses. And then if you want to try the next gen antivirus, those kind of things, just work with your local Carbon Black and VMware sales team, and we can go through and turn those features on also as part of that trial. Um, so with that, I'm, what I'm actually going to do is jump over to the console here so we can start looking and seeing what those, what those things look like. Um, so yes, um, for home labs today, um, it is going to be a little bit more difficult. But again, if you guys like using hands-on labs, um, those are out there today and you can start using those. All right, so what I wanted to start with here is just the vulnerability piece since that's what we looked at inside of vSphere. And again, you're going to see it is all the same data. Um, it's just a view that um, typically is what, how the security you know, folks like to use it. So that's how we refocus it so you can go through and see that. So just like we looked at before, you can expand, look at um, you know, what number of that, you know, um, assets are affected by this vulnerability and go through and look at the score. Um, I can go through and actually it gives me a link over to the national vulnerability database. So you can actually look at all the details of that vulnerability also. So again, we're just trying to make it easy so you can go through and see those things. So right now I'm on product vulnerabilities. I can go, you know, move it over to asset and go through and see, start seeing quickly um, how many vulnerabilities I have across these different assets. 
So that's where you can really start focusing on your environment and see that, hey, maybe there's one vulnerability. If I go through and install it everywhere, then I've really reduced my security posture, you know, the risk to my security posture. Um, or maybe there's just a few assets that are just really bad and I need to update those first. So again, that's where it would make it easy for you to see that visibility. Um, inventory, this is where I want to show you the, how easy it is to start seeing that inventory. Um, so as soon as you um, turn it on, then what we can do is because again, right now what we're talking about is inside the VMware infrastructure. Um, and again, if it's inside of the Kubernetes, it's going to be a very similar process. So once we go through and connect um, to that environment, then we can go through and actually pull all that data in. And what you'll just see is Kubernetes will be another type of inventory in here instead of just our workloads and, and USB devices and endpoints that you're seeing in here. So inside these workloads, you can actually see quickly, here's the ones I have enabled in my environment. Um, and then of course, also here's the ones that are not enabled. Um, so again, you're able to go through and see that. So I can go through and check in here. If I wanted, I could do a mass select and take an action of install sensor um, if these were in a spot that they were available. Um, I can also quickly see um, the versions of VMware tools that I have going on in there. Um, so one thing I'm actually going to do, because I think it's exciting to start seeing some data when I switch over um, to the, the next gen antivirus and doing the EDR threats. So what I'm actually going to do right now is actually jump into a test environment. And what I'm actually doing is I've got a three-tier um, web server um, inside of here. So I've got my web tier, my application tier, and my database tier. So what I'm actually going to do is just kind of act like a, an attacker from that perspective. Um, so what I did just to make it easy for viewing, um, so I'm actually logged into the application tier. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go through the web tier and actually start manipulating and changing what's going on uh, inside this app, you know, inside of this app um, application server. Um, and again, right now, uh, I purposely have this stuff set up so that it's just going to alert and not block. Um, so again, don't think of it that our next gen antivirus couldn't block all these things. Um, I've just purposely turned it on um, so that you could go through and, and see what it looks like. Um, so in this case, I do have Windows Defender turned on. Um, so what you're going to see is I'm going to come over here and actually start doing some, some attacking and acting like an attacker. So what I'm going to do is just putting on my attacker hat. Um, is I'm going to go through and say, you know what, I, I know that there's this web server, and I know that might be a good way into, into the corporation. So I'm gonna just going to start with some basic questions of, you know what, I'm just going to ask the web server, hey, web server, um, kind of what features do you have turned on? So that's what I'm doing right now is just a basic query saying, you know, hitting the web server saying, hey, Mr. Web Server, you know, what's going on in your environment? And again, this will take a little bit of time to go through and, and run here. Um, so now it's back. And actually, I can go through and start looking at this, and I can see that, um, you know, hey, it, it, is, it is a web server. It's a Microsoft IIS server. So I, 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 I now what I'm going to start thinking of is, okay, what kind of attacks can I use? Um, so knowing it's a Microsoft web server, oh, look at this. I can actually see that, hey, it's also, um, it's also got Drupal on it. And I know just because I'm a good, you know, attacker from that perspective, I actually know that Drupal 8 has an exploit. So now what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to use this exploit and show you how easy it is. And that's the reason why I keep saying multiple times, please patch your servers. Um, because even though you, if you have cool next gen antivirus, right, it's like anything else in life. Um, you know, you're, you're going to lock your front door, even though you have a camera, <laughs> right? Um, even though you have motion detectors in your house, um, it's still always a good practice to go through and lock that front door. Um, so again, that's why we say it's really important to do that defense in depth. And so please be patching those servers so that you're really reducing that attack service in your environment. So in here now, what I'm gonna actually show you is just how easy it is that I can actually just turn off this, this antivirus. Uh, and again, all I'm doing is I'm using this Drupal exploit. So it's just um, going through and, and cook, you know, hooking through the web interface and saying, you know what, do this command for me and run it as an admin. And again, we're actually gonna go back and see this also um, because I have the recording functions turned on, I have EDR turned on, um, and the next gen antivirus, I just have antivirus in a, a very basic policy and hey, don't do any blocking. Um, but what you'll see here after a few seconds, once it finally gets connected, um, you'll see it actually went over and actually turned off Windows Defender. And again, these are the kinds of things that an attacker would do is, hey, you know what, now I was able to turn off their antivirus on this machine. They happen to have Windows you know, Defender turned on, so now I'm just gonna continue to crawl through that environment. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go through and try to get a full shell um, console um, access to it. Um, 
But something else you're going to notice here, and again, for those of you that have security background, you're going to notice, ah, port 53. Uh, and you're going to be like, well, why would you be using port 53? Well, DNS. Um, so again, a lot of organizations don't really lock down DNS. And again, DNS is really important, right? Uh, you want users to be able to get to web pages. Um, you want them to be able to look up things based on that, you know, the domain name. Um, so again, that's the reason why we know that that's open. And so just go through and, you know, they're going to use exploits that they know are, you know, people probably don't have protections against. So again, in here, I'm, I'm just going to do a DIR just so you can see I really am inside of that web server, um, you know, folder from that perspective. So I went through the web, I'm all the way to the application, of, you know, folder from this perspective. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue and I'm not going to do a whole bunch of attacks here since this isn't really a, a threat hunting or, you know, it's kind of attacking, you know, kind of presentation. But I do just want to get you guys some ideas so you can start thinking of why is it important a, to be patching software, and then B, to have tools so I can actually go through and see what's going on. Um, and again, it's because it doesn't take much, right? One mess up is all it takes for an attacker to get in, and they're constantly looking for different ways to get in. Um, so inside of here, well, again, I'm just uh, continuing to go through and go further and further inside of my attack. So now I'm actually gonna go even further and say, you know what, uh, using this vulnerability, um, not only am I inside of the app tier now and I went through and turned off you know, Windows Defender, but now go ahead and, and try to put Mimi Cats on that, that system. So again, that's where we're showing is we can just continually to keep going further and further inside of it. Um, and again, I'm gonna stop right here, but typically what I would even do further if I was doing like a real threat hunting is I would show you that, hey, now I've got Mimi Cats on here. So now I can actually grab credentials um, and grabbing credentials from a web server. Typically there's gonna be some sort of, you know, um, admin account in there or something that has higher, um, higher access privileges. So what I'm gonna do is then use that to continue to go further and further in your environment. And again, what you'll see is this could be very difficult. Um, so what I'm going to do is just being, you know, a good attacker, though I'm done and I don't want to go any further, I'm actually gonna, just going to clean up my, my tracks. So I'm just going to say, you know what, go ahead and clean this up. Go ahead and turn on Windows Defender again. Go ahead and delete all my log files, delete Mimi Cats that I put in there, um, or anything else I chose to run. And again, there's multiple different ways to think of this. So again, I'm not saying this is necessarily a way an attacker would use, just giving you kind of principles of what they would do because there's lots of different ways to go through and scrape those Windows credentials. You wouldn't have to download Mimi Cats. You could use PowerShell. There's lots of, you know, just uh, registry settings, all different kinds of ways you can go through and get that, uh, all the, that different information. But again, you'll see that this would be very hard. So within just a few minutes, I was at a table to go ahead and get in, turn off tools, turn tools back on. So if you come back and look at this five minutes later, it would be very difficult for you to know that I was even in there and did anything. Now, granted, if I would have ran ransomware, then you'd have some other indications because now I'm actually encrypting your things because I want you guys to, to pay me in Bitcoin, right, to go through and decrypt your drive. Uh, but again, some attackers are just doing like a smash and grab, right? They're just going in to grab some, some information out of a database. And so what you would have seen if I would have continued this attack, once I got to the web server, I was going to use those credentials from the web server to get over the database server. So now that we've gone through and done um, what I think is always kind of a fun part of a demo, what we're going to actually do is come back here and just start looking at some alerts. <clears throat> but before I do that, um, you know what, actually, let me go through and show you guys this dashboard. So inside of this dashboard, the whole purpose of this is, especially when you're thinking about next gen antivirus, um, is to give an easy way for whoever's responsible for antivirus to come in here and see what's going on. So they can quickly see if I have any inactive agents, anything that's been deregistered and start looking at those things. I'm gonna expand this open a little further so you can see more attacks. Um, you can see the attack stages. So this is the minor attack framework. And what it is is what we would tell whoever the person is here, this analyst that comes in here is, hey, really focus these things on here on the right. Because that means that either I see, you know, something that's installing that looks like it could be malicious or it's trying to install some malicious software or command and control. That means I actually see it talking to a command and control server or worse yet, you know what? I really see that it's actually executing um, some known malicious, you know, malicious files. Um, so again, that's where we're saying focus on these few things. So again, it's just point and click. You start high level and you can just click on it and then start looking at all those details. Um, just like we looked at earlier, again, all that vulnerability information is, is right there and you can quickly see that. Um, threat reports. 
So what you'll see is we're always constantly going through and adding new um, threat reports. So these are the things that are kind of in the media, people are concerned, um, you know, hey, do I, have I had this threat or do I know if this threat ever happened to my environment? Um, so again, all you do is click on it. You can click and read full report. That's where we're, our, our smart guys have gone through and given you a whole report of here's what it looks like. Here's kind of the details of what this threat is really all about. Um, and then here's what it looks like and how you can look for it in your environment. Um, and then what we do is we give you the search criteria. Um, and again, because we're constantly recording, that way we can actually go back and tell you, you know what, 29 days ago, you had these indicators that are now in this, this threat report. So again, our whole purpose is, is so that you can quickly, without doing a lot of work, get that warm and fuzzy and know. And again, this is the stuff the security folks are normally going to be doing, not the infrastructure. Uh, but again, our tools, without being a real burdensome you know, on your environment, are just naturally there so that security folks, if they want to, they can go in a lot further. So now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to look at some of these alerts. And what you'll see here, it's going through and filtering. I purposely have a ton of alerts turned on on this machine just so that people can see uh, how intensive it is. Um, so I've also got watch list tied in. So that's part of our EDR functionality. So that watch list is, hey, I want to look for this kind of behavior um, and go through and either use a threat feed that's already out there, make my own threat feed. Uh, again, those are all kinds of functions. You can go through and do that. So right now I'm going to focus down and say, you know what, let's just look um, at actual antivirus kind of threats that are going on. Um, so you can actually see, um, here's actually an example of one of the threats that was happening earlier is, you know, PowerShell is trying to execute an encrypted script. Um, so I can actually click on this. Um, I can actually start seeing really quickly here, just like we we're talking about is, hey, quickly spin and start getting context. So you can see in here, um, code drop. So, hey, you know what? I actually see that I actually downloaded some, some, some files, some, you know, and it was over the network. So I know it was a network access tied to it. Um, I can see packed code, so it was encrypted. I can see it was actually doing it filelessly. And then of course, um, if I cared about the MITRE ATT&CK framework stuff, then I can actually see here the other MITRE ATT&CK framework that it's tied to. Um, so in this case, I'm not gonna delete this. I'm not gonna delete PowerShell. Um, but if this was a different application, I just wanted to delete it, I could go through and click delete and it would actually go through and remove that. And then I, when we're talking about outside of the data center, again, as long as it has some sort of active internet connection, I can go through and do that. Um, and this is where I'm starting to tie into where people are talking about APIs. So these, again, are all different kinds of things you can tie into those APIs and do full orchestration. Um, so like quarantine. Um, so what that does is it goes through and turns off all of the inbound and outbound network connections except for access to our cloud. So that way I can go ahead and turn that back off later if I want to turn that, that block off. Um, or I could go through and get virus definitions to it. Um, live response, think of this as a full privileged command prompt behind the scenes. Again, we're cross-platform. Um, so especially when you start bringing in end user devices, Windows, Mac, um, Linux, all those different flavors of OSs from that perspective. And, and again, you can use our commands, which are gonna go across to OSs, or you can use the specific OS commands inside of those and use those through an API without even just coming in here and using the the, the active terminal from that session. And again, you can see, you can put notes in here, all those kind of cool things from that perspective. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm a visual person. So I always like this alert triage view. So what this is gonna allow me to do, like what we were talking before, is you can go forwards and backwards in time and actually really understand what's going on. Um, down below, you can see it in a nice graphical view also is understanding, you know, what kind of threats, what, um, what are the threat vectors I have going on. So in here I can see that, hey, this is kind of classified as emerging threat. Um, so what does that mean? It means that it's not necessarily using files, it's actually running a lot of things in memory, which your traditional antiviruses would never be able to really stop. So again, that's what we're trying to do is put these layers in show you how to patch vulnerabilities, show you how to go through and, and stop the next generation kinds of attacks, and then also be able to go back in time and, and go through and see everything that was happening. And then of course, over here, this enriched events, what it's doing is just showing you all the related child processes, all those different kinds of things tied to it. So over here, I'm gonna just gonna go through and expand this a little bit. Um, and what you'll see is we record that full information. So you can see all that CLI um, that was being tossed inside of the command prompt. Um, if this was something that was encrypted, if we have access to the encryption keys, we'll actually go through um, and decrypt that for you. If we can't, then you're just gonna see here as an encrypted blob. Um, but again, the majority of the time we will have access to that information so you can go through and see it. 
And again, a lot of other tools, they would only be able to start at one certain spot um, and then go forward from there. But again, because we're constantly recording that data, you can actually click forwards and backwards and, and start seeing where everything was coming from from that perspective. So what I want to tie in over here right now is going in and looking at policies. The reason why I'm doing this is because as you guys were talking about is, yes, we can do all those features. It's just kind of a licensing exercise from that perspective. Um, but what I really like about our product is a test button. So I always knew it was always difficult and I always hated the day when I knew I had to make a change to my antivirus policy. Again, I've used all those different tools that are out there, all the traditional ones and a lot of even the next generation ones that are out there. But what I always hated is, what am I gonna break when I go through and change this policy? Again, we purposely make it easy for you guys so you can go through and, and just within a few button clicks, go through and change policies. Um, so in here, say maybe I wanna change what I'm doing with PowerShell. Again, it's just, you come in here, we're doing all that hey, heavy AI lifting. So we're defining what ransomware looks like. We're defining what invoking you know, a command line interpreter looks like. Um, we're deciding if it's an untrusted or trusted process. We're doing all that heavy lifting for you. But for you guys, it's just an exercise of saying, you know what, I want to deny operation. Um, or, hey, you know what, I just want to log it but not really do anything. Or now I actually want to deny operation. Or, you know what, I want to terminate process. Um, so inside of that, um, what you can actually do is deny. It's going to be, you know what, in, in the case of PowerShell, this current activity that I'm doing is now malicious, so it's going to stop that activity. What terminate process says is, you know what, I've seen something malicious happen. Now I want to kill everything that's related to that process. Uh, and again, I'll let it start back up, but as soon as it starts doing something malicious again, I'm going to kill that whole chain. Um, so again, that's kind of the difference between deny and terminate. So what I love about this, again, it was that test button I was talking about. So you know what, Do, have I seen any sort of file script attacks going on in my environment? I just click test and it's gonna go through and show me that yeah, over the last 30 days for these type of applications you're looking for, you've actually seen 125 different events on three different devices. And just like we looked at before, you just click it, it spins you over to the investigate screen and you can really start diving in and seeing what's going on with those activities. And again, just like we saw before, you can click on the triage, get the cool triage view. Um, you can go through and do go live. Again, you can see all those details that we were looking at before. Um, and because I know people asked about APIs early on, um, again, all you have to do is really come in here, create your, uh, your API key, and you'll be able to, to go through it and do that. And we have all the API documents are linked here. You just click it and it'll take you over to that. Um, or it'll actually also take you over to our user community um, where people are sharing all the different kinds of things they're, they're doing with our APIs. All right, I'm gonna pause here again because I know I have talked a lot. Um, and see if there's any questions. All right. Live query. Um, what this does is this is part of that where we're talking about audit and remediation functions. Um, so maybe I need to go through and for audit reasons, I need to go through and have an inventory or kind of a snapshot of my RDP settings. I can come in here. Um, you'll see that we already have, I have it in here, lots of different things related to RDP. So in here, I can just go through and I'll just click run. If I wanted to schedule it, I could go through and schedule it to, to run at whatever frequency I want. Um, and again, what this is using is um, OS query. Um, so what you can actually do is if you want to write your own query, just come over to query, you'll have links to the tables and you can go through and do that. Um, so what you'll be able to do is again, um, our, we've got a great, uh, you know, community out there of people going through and writing queries, our own smart people writing queries out there. So again, lots of ways you can go through and customize those and you'll be able to see that is based off of Facebook originally had created um, OS query. And that's what it's based off of is a way to go through and look at processes, memory, all those different kinds of things that you want to know from the machine. Um, so question on how can we get through and get the recording? Um, again, uh, I will let them kind of sum that up at the end on, how, again, all the logistics on how to request the, 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 um, the recordings, um, PowerPoint presentations, all those kind of things will sum at the end. 
All right, um, so we talked about uh, Chrome. Um, you know, so hey, Chrome extensions, it was something I mentioned early on. Um, so again, you come in here and you can see that it's just as simple as everything else is you just click run and it's gonna go through and return back all those Chrome extensions. Um, this is some of the stuff that um, we're the one of the number one, we are the number one when it comes to IR firms where they'll go through and use us. So someone's breached. Um, if they don't have anything, what they'll do is they'll install us um, out of the gate and, and then actually do their investigation using our products. Uh, and the reason why uh, we're the number one uh, for all those IR vendors is because they love all that raw unfiltered data that we give them. And then on top of it, what they'll do is just like I was doing here is running some queries. They'll actually, uh, they have a whole list of, of queries that they'll run um, looking for whatever that particular kind of threat was. So if it sets some registry settings, um, maybe it goes through and creates a scheduled task. Those are all different kinds of things they'll go through and do. Um, so let me show you some, some examples in here. So maybe, you know, executables in odd directories, that could be an indication of a compromise. Those are the kinds of things that those threat hunters are, are gonna go through and do. Um, they'll go through, you know, like I talked about scheduled tasks. They're gonna go through and start looking at those scheduled tasks. Um, they'll go through and see things that have uh, processes where the binaries are not on the disk. Again, those are all kinds of indications of something that's probably a little off. Again, there might be some false positives in it, but at least it gives them a starting point to go through and start looking to see what was going on. Uh, but they're not going to stop there. So again, it's great that they can go through and actively query and get all this stuff. So say I have 10,000 devices, um, I'll be able to get all that data back with guaranteed ELA of within five minutes. The majority of that stuff's just going to be a few seconds. Uh, because what we're doing is, again, we're writing off of all of our other things that's going on. Uh, because again, we don't want to bring in any other security issues, right, with the ways that some people are going through and querying all those devices. So for us, we're just Intensely, you know, built in and using our update functions that we're using for the AV definitions or pulling in the vulnerability data. So what we're doing is saying, hey, you know what? Hey, I need this information. We'll we'll grab that with the next check-in, uh, which you know, again, stuff is checking in all the time from that perspective. But again, if something is really stagnant, not doing anything at all, then that's where we do have a forced, um, hey, at least check in, um, you know, at least one, one, at least you know, once a minute to five minutes, kind of depending on what you guys have it configured for. Um, so what they'll do is, um, just like we could have custom policies, um, and again, that's how it wor works really well for BDI, we can go through and say, hey, this is our master machine. So we go through and template this and say, hey, you know what, this is a list of kind of good things. And then you go through and just look for behaviors that are different on those images, those clones that are spun up instantly. Um, inside this watch list, um, this is where you can go through, and I've already pulled in a bunch of the, a couple of the different threat feeds already, um, but it's as simple as just clicking, um, you know, add watch list, and you can go through and, and add on additional feeds by just clicking subscribe. And what's beautiful about that is whenever you make a watch list, um, you can go back in time. So if you have us running, you know, uh, just for basic antivirus, then when you go through and do this for the full EDR, we're going to go back and scan all that old data and go through and create alerts if you say you want alerts created. If not, we'll just go through and flag it so you can see what's going on. Uh, but again, that's our whole purpose is we know that you need access to this raw data, um, but a lot of times you want to have just those easy buttons. So that's the reason why we give you predefined watch list. You can pull in your own watch list. Um, or just like when we were going through and doing our investigation earlier, anything I'm searching in there to make it a watch list is as simple as just clicking a button. Um, and again, all these you can see examples of here's what it's looking for. So if I wanted to go through and search for this, I'll just go ahead and let it click with me over there. That way it went and cut and pasted that in there. Um, so again, you'll see that's as simple as it is to go through and do a search. Um, and then if I wanted to add it to a threat report, so say this was a new search, all I do is just click here and it will go through and, and you select which lot, watch list you want to add it to um, or what reports. So think of a report as a sub list inside of that watch list. And you click save. Uh, and we do know that some threat feeds can be, you know, really hard. Um, they can be kind of noisy at times. That's the reason why we allow you to fully customize this watch list. So if you have a threat feed and if you see part of that report is, is really noisy or really bad, you can just select that particular part of the report you want to disable and disable that piece. And then what you do is you just come over here and, and grab what the search is, go through and customize it. Um, and then you can create a customized report um, for that specific feature that you had turned off. 
So with that, I know you guys are probably zoomed out a lot um, with meetings. Um, so I wanted to make sure we open it up for questions and then of course, uh, hand it back um, at the end so that you guys can go through and get those details on, on the next, rev, uh, you know, next uh, webinar coming up and then how to get access to this, to this uh, recorded one today. All right, so perfect. It looks like we do have some people that want the recordings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back here so that you guys can see. Here's the information on uh, the next webinar again. Um, and of course, this is the one here today. And then I will hand it back uh, to Stephen uh, to go through if he wants to add any comments on how you can go through and, and get the recordings. Yep. Hey, so um... Thanks for the uh, session today, Sean. Is there anything else that uh, you have before we close out? Yeah, I mean, the one thing is, is I would really encourage you guys um, to look for the free trial. Um, so if you search for the workload free trial, um, we can also probably send it out to everyone that registered. We can probably get you the, a link also to it. Um, so I would really encourage you guys to, to take advantage of that free trial. I've had lots of customers that go through and they're used it and they're just really impressed with the amount of data that they see. Uh, again, with the free trial, it doesn't matter if you already have existing antivirus or anything like that. Just the essentials package will work with anything in your environment today because it's only looking at that vulnerability pieces. Uh, if you want to turn on further and do next gen antivirus, We'll work together with Windows Defender and all those other virus, you know, tools that are out there. Um, there's just some settings that we suggest that you go through and kind of whitelist theirs before we turn it on saying, hey, we don't want to stop any of their processes. But again, we can fully work with any environment you guys have out there today. Go ahead. I'll, I'll hand it back to you. Okay. Thanks so much, Sean. This is really great content today. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, present on this topic. Um, uh, about the recording, um, you know, as we mentioned at the beginning, the, pre the presentation was recorded and your TAM can make that recording link available to you. And after a few months, we will uh, put it on the TAM Services YouTube channel. And um, we really, again, appreciate you joining us. Please join us next month uh, when the VMware on VMware team um, joins us to discuss their experiences of migrating from F5 to Avi load balancers. Uh, that should also be a really great session. Um, we look forward to seeing you for that on January 21st. Again, appreciate everyone joining. Hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks. <laughs>